just hate hiding all the time. Feeling like everybody's whispering about me. Being afraid people are gonna find out I'm this freak. Sometimes I just want to be normal. Lena, you're a miracle. Why would you ever want to be normal? I remember reading the first five pages and knowing that I wanted to do it. This man is a god. From the first time that I met Richard, he had a real specific take on this material. We were impressed with Richard from the very beginning. He took the magic of our world so seriously. I said to Cammy, this is the guy. I love mythologies. The book has wonderful ideas in it and, and great characters and a great story. The script made me want to do the movie because it was just very well developed. The teens that we were writing for wanted to hear not only a boy's voice, but they wanted the girl to be the powerful supernatural and the boy to be the mortal. Our family is different. We have powers. I've always loved supernatural stories, fantasy stories, because I think that they're actually a great way of talking about reality. What first caught my eye was it was set in a southern gothic world. It was so beautiful, but also a little creepy and everything that goes with that. May as well show yourself. I know you're out there. And this idea of the supernatural world hiding under this small little town. This must run under the whole town. The whole country. What is surprising is nobody is who they appear to be. Why didn't you tell us about this? A keeper has to be asked. I liked the idea that it was a love story told from the point of view of a young man falling in love with a girl as opposed to the other way around. I think that the thing that makes the male perspective different is that you get to see me courting her and where I come from. You don't know anything about me. This was a different one because it's a big book. And when you adapt that, there are certain ideas that I felt I could not translate to film. And so I had to focus on what would really move the story along in a film. And for me, it was the love story. Between now and my birthday, I just want to be with you. <laughs> All the characters, they work together as puzzle pieces and make this great movie. It took me a while to streamline the rules, the different kinds of casters and powers that there are. Even though he has made changes, he's been able to kind of capture the heart of not only the town and the story, but each character. And he found actors that could embody those characters. Jeremy Irons was actually Cammy's idea of Macon when she was writing the book. He brought to Macon something that I, I hadn't even thought of. He was more human, is Macon. You have to control your emotions. Loving this boy puts you in terrible danger. The script, and I think the film, will become like an extension of our universe. The level of detail that's been taken in translating yeah. our world from the page to the screen is phenomenal. We walked onto the set with Richard, and it felt like stepping into our book. I think we almost started to cry. I mean, it was so spot on. Lena will not turn dark. She's too strong. To see Allison Alden, Jeremy Irons, Viola Davis, and Emma Thompson saying lines from the script and the book feels like the book is alive. My powers will be claimed for either the light or the dark. You see the way she looks at the boy? There's no getting in between them now. It has begun. Start our lives right now. I can't do that. What is it? You're not telling me something. I know it. What? It's about a young man living in a town that's hidden from the world, and into this town comes this strange young girl. So you're not immortal. What are you then? We prefer the term caster. The casters are sort of a higher species. You know, they're a sophisticated group of witches, but you can't call them that. They don't like it. She did it! She broke the window! Are you all right? They are supernaturals. They're not immortals. They're people who have powers beyond the finite abilities of most mortals. Powers? Yeah. Casters are either dark or light. Some of her family is dark and some are light. And each has their own unique and special powers. I have power over the elements, earth, air, fire, water. Lena is a natural. Her powers are magnified. And yet she's a teenage girl who wants to just be a normal teenage girl. Lena, we have a guest. I go to school with Lena. I'm Ethan White. You have to control your emotions. Loving this boy puts you in terrible danger. I play a character from Makin, who is a caster. Lena will not turn dark. She's too strong. 
You see the way she looks at the boy? There's no getting in between them now. It becomes a Romeo and Juliet story and then a race against time. That boy is a danger to you. Don't invite him here again. No matter what they do to me, I'm still here. In these books, all the histories of the casters from around the world. She's a keeper. I show her the sacred book because she is trying to fight her destiny. When a female caster turns 16, we face what they call reclaiming. My powers will be claimed for either the light or the dark. I don't know who I really am inside. Lena's 16th birthday falls on the most powerful solstice in 5,000 years, and more energy will be released than ever before and transferred to her. It's a big deal. If she becomes a dark caster, she will be the most powerful dark caster in the world, and the same for the light. She's a girl, actually, who has an increasingly strong amount of power that she doesn't know what to do with. I play Ridley Duquesne. She is the older cousin of Lena Duquesne. Ridley was a great girl, but she was destined to become a bad girl. I loved how kind of deliciously evil Ridley is. She's kind of your ultimate bad girl with a teeny tiny heart of gold underneath. You think you can keep Lena so good? Wasn't I the same before I was claimed? Look at what I am now. She has a different color hair every time. She's daring in her clothing. She's very out there. <laughs> I think I found something. It's so delicious to see a fable of this kind being put together in this day and age. I had the most amazing time making this movie. I don't believe that we have one fate and no choice. We make our own lives. I'm scared I'm gonna hurt you. Go ahead. And it has begun. It's been the same for months now. I love that idea of this supernatural world of these casters hiding under this small little town. It's like I've known her all my life. Well, it's about two worlds that exist side by side. And I want her, no matter what happens. There's something about Lena. She's just different from anybody else. He's just drawn to her. Lena first comes into Ethan's life in the middle of a road. You almost killed me! What were you doing standing in the damn road? He sees this incredible sophistication in her. Been to a lot of schools? Yeah. It must be nice. I only ever lived here. It must be nice. She has this no-nonsense personality. Oh my god, you mean Ethan Wake drove me home? You've heard of me? No. <laughs> Run tell your friends about the freak. You really think I'm that guy? What charms her is Ethan's brash enthusiasm. You can't complain about not having any friends and then make a guy work this hard trying to be one. With Lena, I no longer feel so alone in this town. I start to feel like I have somebody. And what I thought I needed to leave Gatlin for, I actually can have with her. Lena? I agreed to let you attend what passes for a school in this town, but no friendships. That boy is a danger to you. She has never experienced acceptance in her life. It's an alien idea to her. I shouldn't be in the same class as a Ravenwood. Emily, shut up. My mama says the same thing. Says her whole family are Satanists. We find out that she is a supernatural. On her 16th birthday, she's either going to be good or bad. The powers will be claimed for either the light or the dark, depending on my true nature. I am trying to keep any influence away from her that could possibly allow her to turn. Do you see the way she looks at the boy? One of those influences, I believe, is love for a non-caster. That first heartbreak. It's enough to turn any girl dark. Ethan and Lena's mission throughout the film is to find some way to stay together. The curse can be broken. Get rid of him. What? I yelled at you because I care about you. Ah! I'm scared I'm gonna hurt you. A story about first love, good and evil. I've been going out of my mind for the last two weeks. I don't care about them, about the curse. You are not going dark and you are not losing me. No matter what you do, no matter what they do to me, I'm still here. Now, what does that tell you?
When I was prepping the movie, I stressed everyone to use their imaginations as much as possible, especially in the costumes and the wardrobes. That's why I wanted to use Jeffrey Curlin, who's an old friend of mine. It was really great meeting him early on and beginning to understand Lena and why she dresses like this. It's fun getting into those details. It's such a creative job. I mean, there, is no, there are no definites in it. You know, you have the town of Gatlin, which is a real place, and an unrealistic world of casters who gave me a definite challenge to invent a world that doesn't exist within a world that does exist. Consider this an early Sweet 16 present. Background action and action! We had over 1,500 extras in our film. We had reenactment of the Civil War, a battle called Honey Hill. Over 300 people in that. Uniforms were made. It was an interesting job, to say the least. And the claiming is also a key part of the story. We thought about it, I said, well then, it would just be like a coming out party, and they should be the most eccentric looking people. I don't know how he did it, but he created 25 of the most original costumes I've ever seen. Each one of those extras took three hours to dress. I love the antebellum dress that is kind of a black lace turtleneck pleated number with a corset in it. It is her version of what an antebellum dress is. And then went into the Victorian collar, so it's kind of many periods mixed into one. But I wanted to make Ridley an iconic film look. I wanted her to be Rita Hayworth in Gilda, Marilyn Monroe in River of No Return, and then I wanted her to be Doris Day, and he just went to town with all of that. So she's quite the fashionista and quite the um, evildoer. Ridley, my dear, what an unpleasant surprise. Uncle Macon, how old and weak you look. The clothing that I made for Mrs. Lincoln, who was very repressed, was just proper, but still there is an elegance to it in its way. Jeffrey's had this fabulous opportunity to put me into some of the ugliest things he's literally ever made and one of the most beautiful. There is a character hidden in Mrs. Lincoln who has to emerge from her, so I had to serve both at times. If you borrow the body, you have to borrow the closet, and my dear, you would think the woman invented the house coat. <laughs> Macon, his look changes with a whim. Period-wise, it's thrown up in the air. I pulled from every period there was. It worked very well because an actor of that stature makes that happen. And then you have Lena. Because she is either going to be dark or light, that the gray seemed to be the perfect choice to set her right in the middle as far as that was concerned. The inspiration of it is the ball gowns of the 40s and the 50s to just show a girl coming into her own, which is what the claiming is. She becomes a woman. As far as what the costumes say, they tell a visual story of every character in the movie, and that's what I do.